Okay, we continue our discussion about the derivation of the conservation laws in the transport phenomena. So today I'm going to introduce the, the concept of Jacobian. Um, let's consider um, uh, here a rectangular coordinate system and any differential volume you can represent very small piece of volume by dx1, dx2, and dx3. I just represent this in the coordinate system like this. If I call this x3, this is my x2, and this is my x1. I call this three space so let's say I have some uh, control volume like this and let's call this dx2 dx1 and dx3 so on now basically this is the uh, this, this control volume is the representation of let's say again in rectangular coordinate system uh, let's say I have this uh, plane here obtained and let's say I have that vector like this and I carry out this plane up to this vector length like this so then I can write my control volume by dot product between B uh, cross product C as this gives another vector here I show and also this uh, scan the dot product between A and the result of this uh, B cross product C scan all this volume so we call this the control volume so where you can sh show here the A is the x1 and L1 unit vector, and similarly, B is equal to dx2, L2, and C is equal to dx3, and L3, so on. Then, I can write the, my control volume in terms of A, L1 dot product between dx2 L3 cross product between dx3 L3 and so on. So from here, what I obtain, I obtain dx1, dx2, dx3, and this is give permutation three and it's give the result of the x1 the x2 and the x3 because from here according to the permutation rule I obtained one and it's give the result of that one so in the rectangular coordinate system I can obtain my control volume differential volume uh, not the control volume differential volume by the x1 multiply the x2 and multiply the x3 okay moving the other part let's say now i define my in reference in rectangular coordinates I define my reference point before by these three elements. 
and uh, differential element of this then this point reference point is gonna give like this now assume for each x i in here the x is representation of the any position vector so i can write the position vectors in terms of by the reference vector and i can write from here the x1 is going to be equal to x1 is this this x1 is the function of the at uh, this three element so I, I can write x2 similarly x2 again is the function of x2 uh, and 3 and x3 is give 1 2 and 3 basically i can show this in terms of in this i is gonna be a function of x2 and x3 so this is the the relation between the uh, position vector and the reference uh, point the re reference vector reference re point is also has three elements as i showed be before because we are in the three space okay let's continue our discussion about again so now i can write the position vector dxi uh, dxi is equal to partial derivative of the xi respect to l1 is here is a constant in here k not equal to j and this is the so i can write this open form like this partial derivative of the xi respect to one is two and three is constant then i can write this plus similarly the x partial derivative of the xi two this time is uh, one and three is constant then the x true i can write them plus xi 3 this time 1 and 3 is, two is constant then so i can this is the open form of this that one now the differential volume is dv dx1 i showed before dx2 and dx3 can write the my differential volume by dx uh, sorry one because I showed before differential volume can be show first product C let's give differential volume here like this that product between dx this x is the position vector so in here i have that one first product between dx uh, sorry dx um so then from here i obtain actually it is gonna be uh xi I x i from here I can write x i j k k Then obtain 
the permutation. Um, that one. So from here, what I see dx1, dx2, dx3 equal to j dx1. I'm oh, sorry, dx. So what I see differential volume respect to any position vector here is equal to differential volume of the reference point multiplied by Jacobian. I call here that one as Jacobian. So go right here. This is Jacobian. Okay, now let me write the Jacobian here. I can write my Jacobian here by nine element matrix form dx1. dx2. dx3. So to find the Jacobian, actually I need to find this uh, nine elements here. The x one, sorry, partial derivative it's two. X three, so on. I just move. Mm. Two. Then it's going to be equal to another form of So basically, I can find my Jacobian by this matrix form. Um, what was this? Dx1, dx2, dx3 equal to my Jacobian. For any given the reference point, if I want to find uh, my control volume, or I just want to find the dx1, dx2, dx3. I should multiply this control volume, the reference point, by the Jacobian to find my uh, control volume, differential volume, not the control volume, sorry, differential volume uh, of the position vector. Okay. Just, just go move. Okay. Okay. Uh, so far, where we are we are here actually we define the vector and tensors we define we just review the, the calculus the vector and tensors we define here the x is the position vector and the coordinate system let's say we are on three space and rectangular coordinates let's say we have x1 x2 x3 this is anything can be called position vector or other representation of x and i can have another vector like this let me show that sorry x 
x3 I have this one I call this the reference vector reference point and I define the dx over d uh, substantial derivative of the x respected time I obtain the velocity term here and I define partial derivative and define the, uh, this term here and before so I go back from here just define partial derivative respect to time and uh, you find that one substantial and I define the total derivative so on okay and I define the Jacobian next what's gonna be the dj over dt to find the Reynolds transport theorem from here okay what is the material derivative uh, I find here the, we call this material derivative this term is can represent uh, any variable so to find the, the material derivative we should get this formula it this was the result of the relationship between the partial derivative substantial derivative and total derivative then we obtain the material derivative and i go here what i see what was my uh, jacobian i was so my jacobian by this formula if you remember from the matrix then i can write again similarly by this and i get the a material derivative of the jacobian i obtain this three term here you see the first one nine here nine here nine elements here now d over dt uh, dx uh, partial derivative x1 respect that uh, reference point you can get that result now one this, this, these are the equal each other and i obtain partial derivative v1 uh, respect the, the reference point so on i i get that point from here from here so then similarly this is gonna be equal to that one then what i'm gonna get i'm just gonna get a material derivative of the jacobian respect to dt finally we obtain that result you see uh, partial derivative v1 is respect to x1 so on and we have that three terms then what was this this was the jacobian actually we obtained before from our result this is the that one is the definition of the jacobian and that one is the open form of the divergence of v so if we um, exchange with this the jacobian and this the uh, divergence then we obtain that one so what was the so what is the final result material derivative of the jacobian uh, respect to t is give that one so i can write this another form like this. in the physical meaning of that one gradient I'm sorry, divergent of V. Let's say you have an the fluid is going, is there some velocity like this? What is gonna be this uh, physical meaning of this divergence? It's gonna be give the, the relative rate of change of the the dilation or expansion while following the material. So most of the time in the uh, transport phenomena we uh, assume the fluid is incompressible so then we we give this as a zero we, we assume this zero but this time it just continue uh so also why we have this result this gives zero 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 that's why we we obtain in, in here that that result so as a final we get that one okay now moving the next part so as we drive before the Reynolds transport uh, theorem given function of the x t uh, position vector and the time 
then any extensive property is function of the x and the t. You can write ft by this form for the uh, differential volume. Then getting this function material derivative, then we obtain that one. Then moving with the mass. Now V is the function of time in general, so we cannot interchange the operation D over DTM, but to transform the V to the V0, V is the uh, represent the, the, the volume of the uh, and the, when your uh, control volume uh, move. V0 is the represent the control volume out when the time is zero. Then what is the relation between the V and V0 before we, we obtain that one? Actually, if you remember, we obtain the x1, the x2, the x3 was equal the sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we can write D here. Uh, so what was this? This represents the reference. So this represents just V0. What is this? This is the uh, when time is equal to t, is represent the control volume, any flow, and let's say in the, the control volume of the flow, we can show this as a v uh, related to your position vector. Then I can write dv is equal to Jacobian multiplied by dv zero relationship between the differential volume elements. In. So okay, then. From here, what I have, that one, I, I can exchange, instead of this, I can write Jacobi multiple dv0. This is because it's the constant uh, at time equal to zero. You have the constant uh, v0. If you remember my other um, video, we had some control volume like as an initial control system, because v0, because the time is zero okay let's move the next part from here i can write this okay i can write here inside of this i have now that one i have now have jacobian i can write by the uh, chain rule what is the uh, material derivative the f over dt is gonna give that one and that one is that one actually this is the uh, I found this this is the result of the Jacobian multiplied by the divergence V then I I just take the Jacobian out here and inside of parentheses I obtain that result because uh, The ft over dt because this is gonna what this is gonna give the result that one actually we showed before that one is equal to dv Jacobian zero then I can exchange this dv now I call this that one this this the Reynolds transport theorem. Before I show this derivation of the in the conceptual form, in here also we derive by Jacobian like this. Now, now this is the time of the apply this Reynolds transport theorem. The uh, derivation of the conservation laws. Let's say okay. Let's start some example of the conservation of the mass. Let's say you have some the body or control volume control system like this no generation or no consumption so actually let's say this is your density of your uh, fluid or inside of the control volume this is the function of x and t function of the position vector and the function of the time so material volume is just represented by v then what's gonna be mass in the v? It's gonna be triple uh, integral rho dv. When you get triple integral, it's gonna give this your mass. 
from the definition before. Then I can write the mass in the control volume V and T because I'm uh, mass is the function of time. I can write by this form. Then I if I put my the the function in here the peak like a mass mass of the control volume. Then what's gonna be material derivative of the m over dt? So what's this? So I can I I write that one. Actually, d over dt and rho dv, and I can write this uh, by this form like here. You see, this now is gonna represent my nx uh, intensive variable rho. It's gonna represent in an extensive variable. So how then I put this instead of this the rho? I just write this dm over dt change by this form, and this gonna give the result of zero because why? Before I know from the before definition, the mass cannot be generated or cannot be consumed, so the mass change respective time is gonna be zero for this inside of this control volume because the mass is not gonna be uh, generated or and not, cannot be consumed then this is gonna be equal to zero so then then i have that form that form therefore it's not just integral that is zero but also the, the kernel is zero and i get this and take this out as a this form then to get this 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 that one is equal to zero because differential volume cannot be zero what should be zero this should be zero then i take this out i said okay this should be zero then i call this continuity equation conservation of mass so i just draw the total conservation of mass so what's the result the material derivative of the rho respect to t plus this term is the rho multiplied by the uh, divergence of v uh, should give the result of zero this is the constant that one and i'm taking the constant initial uh, starting points so so alternate form uh, the alternate form is what's that uh, material derivative I know from that one from here this is the material derivative representation I can write this you see from here again I had this is an intensive property I can write in this form if I write this by this form if I put here so I, I obtain that result then I what I get then I Partial derivative rho density respect to t is going to be equal minus if I take uh, this part in the right side, I get minus v this time is grad p plus. Divergence V. Okay, then I can write this as a closed form that operator, that product. I know from the operation of the del operator and that product between the row and V is give that, that result. I see this is the open form of that one. Okay. This actually give the fixed volume accumulation rate of mass net input rate due to the mass of flux in, in the right side. This is the accumulation rate of the mass in the fixed uh, uh, volume, the volume not change, and this right side is give net net input rate of the mass flux. Actually, you say. You have your control volume input rate net input one you can show here our output okay okay next next one actually i just wanna 
uh, uh, stop here. The next one, I, I'm just gonna move the conservation of the the momentum. So I just wanna let's, let's some summarize. Before we obtain what is the material derivative, the meaning of the material derivative, um, and substantial derivative of uh, big D and intensive uh, uh, variable change respect to time, is give us that 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 one. That equal the right side. Okay, then what we obtain here, if I go, we define the x any position vector, we define the, the vector represent the starting point, reference point. We have some velocity, and what is going to grow velocity is the velocity is the uh, material derivative of, of the big dx over dt. How do your x change respect to time? And I have uh, we define the partial derivative and we define the material derivative, so on. Then we define what is Jacobian. Now, after that point here, we obtain that important. Uh, sorry. Before I show uh, dx1, dx2, dx2 equal to Jacobian, the, the other one, a starting point. Uh, Control uh, differential volume, and I do find I get the material derivative of the Jacobian here. From here, we show that material derivative of the Jacobian is equal to that one, and I control in alternative form here. Then I just he came here, the Reynolds transport theorem. I define some intensive variable respect to x and T and then I define some extensive variable f as a function of t, and I find some again extensive property like in in this form in intensive property inside of control volume. I know know from the before. Now I can get some uh, material derivative of f respect to t. It's gonna give the result that one. And in here I just exchange the v with the v zero. I know from before dv is equal to Jacobian dv is zero. If I put here, I get that result. Then in the next part, I obtain that one. Then I get that one. And finally, this is going to be equal to Jacobian dv is zero is going to be equal to dv. So I call this that one the uh, Reynolds transport theorem. In this theorem, the left side, the accumulation rate of any extensive uh, property you know the extensive properties that depends on the system size for example i can give like a mass when you make your system bigger and bigger your mass is going to be increased or yeah then the right side is equal to input rate net input you can have some input or output or something inside of your control volume is represent that one let's apply that one in the some conservation of the mass Okay, let's say you have some body, control volume, control system, you have some densities, the function of the x and t, then I can write the volume v inside of in v, total mass is the in this form, uh, if you, I get the triple integral of the row inside of control volume, I obtain the mass, and I get the material derivative of the mass, the respect to t, in the, so the mass change in respect to time. I obtain that one and that one. It should be zero because the accumulation rate of the mass has to be zero because I cannot we cannot create mass or we cannot um, consume mass. Then sh this should be zero. In here, if to get zero in the right side, this cannot be zero and this inside parentheses should be zero. Then I set this the equal to zero. We call this continuity equation of conservation of mass. An alternate form, I can write this material derivative by this form. I know from before, I can write this total. And if I take this right side, I can write this right side in the closed form by this. And this left side, the meaning of physical meaning, the accumulation of rate of mass in the fixed volume and net input rate due to mass flux. Okay, in the next video, we are going to continue conservation of momentum and conservation of the energy. See you in the next video.